lesson, I'm going to show you how to find the centre and the radius of a circle when given the equation of that circle. In the first few examples, I'll show you the equations when they're given in completed square form and later on when they're not. So before we look at these questions here, I just want to draw your attention to this equation at the top. This is the equation of a circle and it's given in what we call completed square form. So it says x minus a in brackets all squared plus y minus b in brackets all squared and it's equal to r squared. So when an equation of a circle is written in this format and rearranged to look something like this, we can read off the coordinates of the centre of that circle and also work out the value of the radius r. The centre coordinates of the circle lie at a, b in this example. So the x coordinate is a, this value here, and the y coordinate is b, this value over here. And finally the radius would be the value of r in this equation. Okay, so I just want you to bear that in mind as we work through these questions. So here it says, write down the coordinates of the centre and the radius of each of these circles. So this is our first equation. So if we compare it back with what's written at the start here, this general equation of a circle in completed square form, you can see that here the value of A is 3 and the value of B is 6, which means the centre of the circle lies at 3, 6. Okay, they're the coordinates of the centre of this circle. Notice how here we have a negative sign inside the brackets and we do in this question as well. So you're literally just taking this number and writing it here. So it's actually the opposite sign to what's written in the equation. This value here, remember, is equal to r squared. So if r squared is equal to 25, to solve that equation and find the value of r, you would have to do the opposite of squaring, which is square rooting. And if you work out the value of the square root of 25, it's 5. So the radius of this circle would be 5, and the centre lies at 3, 6. Okay, that's the first one. In number 2, this time, when we look at the equation, it's not written quite in the same way as the one over here with the negative signs. Okay, if we were to put a negative sign here, we would have to put another negative because two negatives make a plus. So this time, when you write down the x-coordinate for the centre of the circle, it would be negative 2. Okay, so this time it lies at negative 2 and then positive 1. Okay, so an easy way to remember it is that it's this number but the opposite sign when you're looking at the centre coordinates of the circle, okay? And then, just like in the first question, to work out the radius, you have to square root this number here. So the square root of 1 is 1, so the radius is 1. Okay, so here's the centre of the circle, and this is the radius. Now, in number 3, it says x squared plus y squared equals 16. Well, this time, there's no bracket, okay, but it's still in completed square form. It's just like having x plus 0 all squared plus y plus 0 all squared, okay? And now you should be able to see that the x and y coordinate of the centre of the circle would just be 0. Okay, so whenever you see x squared plus y squared, you know the centre of the circle is at the origin. So the centre of the circle is 0, 0, and the radius is the square root of 16, which is 4. In question 4, the equation of the circle is written here, okay, and you can see again that it doesn't look quite like the equation that we looked at at the beginning of the lesson, okay? You can see that this time, there's a 2 being multiplied with both of those square brackets and there isn't in this equation up here. So the first thing I'm going to do in this question is divide everything in the equation by 2. So if I divide by 2 here, 2 divided by 2 is 1 and it cancels to leave me with x minus 3 all squared. Same thing here, if I divide 2 by 2 I get 1, so it cancels and I'm left with y plus 4 all squared. And lastly, if I divide this by 2, I get 64. So now it looks like that equation I showed you at the beginning of the lesson, and from here it's much simpler to write down the centre 
and then the radius of the circle, okay? So the center coordinates are at positive three and negative four, okay? And then remember, this value here is r squared. So if r squared is equal to 64, r is the square root of 64, which is eight. So the radius of the circle is eight, okay? Now, in number five, it's not written in completed square form. So what we're going to do is rewrite it in completed square form and then it will be much easier to work out the center and the radius. So what I need to do first is just group the x terms together. So I'm just going to write x squared plus 10x next to each other and then write the y squared minus 8y next to each other. Okay, so that's the first step. Now I'm going to complete the square looking at the x terms, okay? So I need my square brackets, okay? Here I take the number 10 and I divide it by two to get five, okay? So if you expand those brackets, you would get the x squared, you would get the 10x, but you would also get five times five, which is 25, which you don't need. So you have to remember to subtract this number squared, okay? Now we're going to do the same thing, but with the y terms. So we need to have our square brackets with the y inside. Take the number here, so negative eight, divide it by two, so negative four. And if you were to expand these square brackets, you would get the y squared term, you would get the negative eight y, but you would also get negative four times negative four, which is positive 16, which we don't want. So you have to remember to subtract this number squared, okay, four squared. Then, not forgetting, there's a negative 40 here. I'm just going to write that down as well. Okay, if you're not sure about completing the square, please do watch my other lesson on completing the square and this will make a little bit more sense, okay? So now I'm just going to tidy this equation up and just simplify. So I'm just going to write the square brackets next to each other. And I'm going to add all these numbers. So negative 25, take away 16, take away 40 is negative 81. And then if we want to rewrite it in the format like I showed you at the beginning, we need to move that negative 81 over to the right hand side of the equation. Okay, because remember it's always equal to r squared. So the term without x and y here, you need to move over to the right hand side. So I'm just gonna carry on up here. Okay, so whenever we move a number over to the other side of the equal sign, it changes sign, so it's going to become positive 81. So the equation is x plus 5 squared plus y minus 4 all squared, all squared equals 81. And now we can see the center of the circle is at negative 5, 4. Okay, remember this number but the opposite sign. Okay, and then r squared is equal to 81. So to work out the radius r, you would square root 81, and the square root of 81 is 9. So the radius of this circle is 9. In question 6, the equation of the circle is 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 14x minus 10y minus 163 equals 0. So again, I'm going to rewrite the equation in completed square form so that it's easier to find the centre and the radius of the circle. But before I do that, I'm going to start with dividing everything in the equation by two, okay? Because if I divide these first two terms by two, I can rewrite the equation as x squared plus y squared instead, which is much simpler, okay? Now remember, you have to divide every single term in the equation by two. So if I divide this by two, I get negative seven x. Here I get negative five y. And with this, I'm going to get a decimal. I'm actually going to leave it as a fraction. I'm going to write it over to instead. Okay, now, before I complete the square, I'm just going to write the x terms next to each other. So x squared minus seven x, and then the y terms next to each other. So y squared minus five y. And now I'm going to complete the square. So remember, if we look at the x terms here, you have to start by writing down your square brackets and fill in the x value. Then you take the coefficient of x and you divide it by two. I'm just going to leave it as a fraction. You could also write it as a decimal, that's fine. And then you have to remember to minus 
this number squared. So 7 over 2 squared. If you want to write minus 49 over 4 and do the calculation as you go along, that's fine as well. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the y terms. So I need to add my square brackets, this time with the y value. Here the coefficient of y is negative 5, so if I divide that by 2, I'm just going to write it over 2. You could also write minus 2.5, that's okay. And then you need to remember to minus this number squared. And again, if you want to minus 25 over 4, do the calculation as you go along, that's okay as well. Not forgetting to minus 163 over 2 as well at the end, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is just write the square brackets containing x and y next to each other. So x minus 7 over 2 squared plus y minus 5 over 2 squared, just so it looks like this equation I showed you at the beginning of the lesson, okay? The square brackets with x and the square brackets with y. Now, these here are all numbers, okay? So if you put in your calculator um, negative uh, 7 over 2 all squared minus 5 over 2 all squared minus 163 minus 2, you should find that it comes to negative 100, okay? Now, the last step, just to rewrite it, in this exact form here, is to move this number over to the right hand side, the constant, the part without x and y. Okay, so this is going to change to a positive 100 when it moves over to the right. And now the equation has been rewritten in the exact same format as that one I showed you at the start. So we can see that the center of this circle would lie at the coordinates positive 7 over 2 or positive 3.5 and the y coordinate would be positive 5 over 2 or 2.5 and the radius would be the square root of 100 which is 10.